Well, let's get more on this now with Virginia Dignam, a member of the European Union's high-level expert group on AI and a professor of social and ethical artificial intelligence at Sweden's University of Umeå. Thank you very much indeed for being with us. Uh, so we heard the EU Commissioner Thierry Breton describing the plans as historic, saying that it sets clear rules for the use of AI. Overall, how do you you think how significant do you think it is this provisional deal that's been called the AI Act and how necessary is it? It is, uh, it is very necessary it is, and it is very important. I agree with the, the Commissioner that it's an historical moment. It's the very first in the world uh, uh, set of rules established uh, specifically for AI and it's based on the protection of fundamental rights and the European values. It is an example and it is, I think, something which will be a, 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 a flagship or a, um, a pointer for all other uh, developments developments in the world. I actually, uh, I'm a member of the U United Nations Advisory Board on AI and we were having a meeting the last two days in New York. I just arrived from New York and all of us there from all over the world were looking at the developments in Europe as something which is going to be really influential for the rest of the, the uh, our other countries and other regions are going to deal with the AI regulation. Mm, okay, so the world is looking at what the Europeans are doing about Definitely. this and calling Definitely. it a, a flagship. And so, looking at the details of this, what key elements stand out to you? And do they go some way to regulating the AI used within systems like chat, GPT and facial recognition? So the first we need to understand is that it is a provisional agreement. We need to, to uh, still to wait some time to, to read the, the final text. So that there will be some work still in the coming weeks uh, towards the final text. So I cannot really speak with certitude what will come there. But from what we have seen, there are definitely some uh, big steps forward towards strong prohibitions and there is a list of banned applications including for instance remote uh, biometric identification and also other types of manipulative techniques so that those i think are very strong um, um, bans and uh, no goes the red lines for how ai should be used uh, within europe and at the same time uh, with the, with uh, respect to uh, general purpose models or general purpose AI, as the, the Act talks about them, there are some uh, clear dis indications that those systems need to, uh, to uh, comply with at least some transparency uh, requirements. And if they are uh, of systemical level, then there needs to be some extra, um, extra mm. steps and extra uh, requirements to those that develop and those that use the systems. And could this rule book help or might it hinder researchers and startups in the AI industry? Uh Research is uh, explicitly set out of the regulation. So while uh, while things are in the research level, there is no uh, no not many requirements. Uh, once things start being uh, used in uh, practice, then of course we need to take into account the the regulations. Depending uh, again, uh, following this uh, risk-based approach and the different levels of risk. But that's not different than in other areas in which research uh, when we one move from research to to uh, application there are uh, extra rules i don't think that it's a hinder for startups i think that it gives startups a direction in which to go it gives also a kind of a level uh, playing field in which everybody knows what what are the rules of the game a game without rules is a, a game in where no one can win and no one can play so i think it's uh, important for also especially for startups to have this type of uh, opportunities to also innovate within a, a specific set of rules and also innovate in the new uh, standards and the new uh, uh, requirements that are coming with this law. Virginia Dignam from the University of Umeå in Sweden, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.